Hello children, welcome to today's class. I hope you are all doing fine, isn't it? Children, look at this picture. Can you see a boy there? He is reading the book and as he is reading, he is imagining to be a lot of things, isn't it? Today, we are going to learn about a poem called Imagination by the poet George Bernard Shaw. Now children, I am sure you are all so bored sitting at home. You don't know what to do and where to go and I am sure you are so restless. So I thought, why shouldn't I take you for a trip? Are you ready to come with me? Yes? So shall we go on a trip then children? Yes, let's go on an imagination trip. Now for that, you need to step on board. Yes, quickly climb, climb onto the hot balloon parachute. Yes, and now let's fly high children. Yes, come on children, let's fly. Now children, where shall we go? Yes, we have come to this beautiful place. Now, you know what is this place? This is Antarctica. Can you see how the penguins are walking? And now, let's go to this place. Which is this place? Yes, this is Sahara Desert. Oh my God, it's so hot, isn't it? Yes, children. But look at the camel ride. I'm sure even you want to do it, isn't it? Now, let's go to this beautiful place, but also dangerous. You know, what is this place called? Yes, it's called the Ring of Fire. Now, this is a volcanic chain surrounding the Pacific Ocean. Can you see these mountains? They are always active with volcanoes. Ooh, quite dangerous, isn't it? Yes. Now, why don't we go to African jungles and see the elephants? Wow, look at the elephant herd. How nicely they are walking. And what about this cheetah? My God, it looks like it is going to catch a prey. Which prey is it going to catch? Yes, it is going to catch the giraffe. It's going to hunt the giraffe. My God, look at all these animals, children. Though they look ferocious, but still they all live in solidarity and they all look at peace. Isn't it? Now, why don't we go to the moon as well? Yes, let's fly to the moon children. Wow, look at the moon children. How beautiful it is. Now, I think it's getting late for our class and don't you think we should come back? I'm sure you want to stay in the moon for quite a lot of time. But we have a class, remember? Yes, now let's come back children. Yeah, be careful. While getting down, yes children, yes, so did you like the trip children, yes. So in this poem too, imagination, the poet tells us how he lived in the world of fantasy and imagination. Do you want to know more about this poet, yes, let's know about the poet. So you already know the poet is George Bernard Shaw. So let's know more about him children. George Bernard Shaw was born on 26 July 1856 in Dublin, Ireland as the youngest of three children. He was raised in genteel poverty. What is this genteel poverty? Means trying to keep the style of high social class but with little money. His mother's career as a professional singer influenced his interest in music and art. In 1895, Shaw began writing for the Saturday Review as a theatre critic and from there he began to write his first plays. He wrote more than 60 plays including major works such as Man and Superman in 1902, then Pygmalion 1912 and St. John in 1923. He got the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925. Shaw's most successful work 
Pygmalion was adapted into the popular Broadway musical My Fair Lady which won him Oscar. So, George Bernard Shaw is the only person who has got Nobel Prize as well as an Oscar. He died on 2nd November 1950. Yes children, now that we have known about the poet, now let us go to the poem. Before that, let us learn the meaning of some new words that is going to appear in this poem. Are you all ready? Yes. The first word is pirate. Who is a pirate? You can see the picture. He is a person who attacks and robs at sea. So, he is a pirate. Now, have you watched this movie called Pirates of the Caribbean children? This is one interesting movie. When you have time, please do watch it. Okay? Now, Eskimos. So, they are native peoples of Alaska and other Arctic regions. So, you know the most interesting thing about this Eskimos are they live in these houses called as igloos and this is made of snow blocks. Wow, isn't it interesting children? Look at this phrase, fantasy was all a glow means that which comes from one's imagination. Now, let us see this picture, this is a picture of planetarium. You must have gone to planetarium, right? They show us show on astronomy, isn't it? Now, let us take an example. The children were taken to the planetarium and their excitement and fantasy was all aglow. Yes, mysterious means difficult or impossible to understand, explain or identify. Now, look at this ship. It is sinking in the water. The ship sank in mysterious circumstances. Now, let us read the poem. So, children, I hope you are ready with your text. Have you all opened the text? Now, turn to page number 109 and we shall read the poem Imagination by George Bernard Shaw. I used to play at pirates and sail the seven seas. Then I was a cowboy. These simple things did me please. I had a vivid imagination and adventure was always on my mind. I discovered the joys of reading and escaped the daily grind. Once I lived with the Eskimos in the land of ice and snow. Went hunting and a fishing, my fantasy was all aglow. I read a book of Joel's warning and went off to the moon. It was just to take a look, then it was time to return. I spent time in the forest of Africa with Dr. Livingstone as my guide. Then off to America with Huckleberry Finn, I did hide. In my world of fantasy and imagination, I performed such wonderful deeds. A hero of all the nations, I was the one that did succeed. Then I grew up my childish world at an end. I had become serious. It nearly drove me around the bend. I still do like the mysterious. This is the message I am trying to send. Yes, with this we have come to the end of reading the poem children. Now, did you all understand the poem children? Did you all follow with me? Now, let us analyze the poem for better understanding of the poem children. Yes, look at the first stanza. I used to play at pirates and sail the seven seas. Then I was a cowboy. These simple things did me please. Now, these simple things did me please. What simple things please the poet? Yes, as a poet, as a boy, the poet used to play the game of pirates and act as if he were sailing in a ship on seven seas. Next, then he would think he was a cowboy. Can you see? He is a cowboy taking care of a cattle on a ranch. So, he took care of all the cattle on a ranch and riding on a horse. Let us move to the second stanza children. I had a vivid imagination. Adventure was always on my mind. I discovered the joys of reading 
and escape the daily grind. Now, what is the meaning of vivid imagination? Yes, it is an ability to imagine unlikely situations very clearly. So, here the poet as a little boy had clear imagination. Now, what was always on the poet's mind? Yes, adventure was always on his mind. So, what does the poet mean by the daily grind? Yes, the daily routine of work or activity especially as considered to be dull or tiresome, repetitious means the work that you do every day may be getting up, reading, going to school, coming back, playing. So, all these were something monotonous for the poet. He was very bored with all those daily grind. Now, what did he do to escape from that daily grind? Yes, he discovered the joys of reading. He started reading books. Now, how did it help him to escape from the daily grind? So, while reading, he would become so engrossed in it that he would forget the hard and dull work of the day. Children, do you also enjoy reading? I am sure you will say yes. So, what do you feel are the joys of reading children? Yes, reading helps us learn about many things. So, as you read books, you start learning different things that is there in the book, is not it? Next, it deepens and widens our knowledge. So, sitting there with small, one small book, you can go to America, Africa, to different parts of the world and learn a lot of things by just reading a book and it also deepens your knowledge. So, it makes us more human and broad minded. Then reading also helps us in our daily life by equipping us better to cope with life. Have you all understood what are the benefits of reading? Yes, very good children. Now, let us move to the third stanza. Once I lived with the Eskimos in the land of ice and snow, went hunting and a fishing, my fantasy all aglow. Yes, what did the poet do in the state of the Eskimos? The poet went hunting and fishing in the land of Eskimos. So, why does the poet say my fantasy was all aglow? See, after reading a book on the life of Eskimos, the poet transported himself into the land of Eskimos. So, he himself went to the land of Eskimos. So, he imagined to be living with them, hunting and fishing with them. His imagination was set on fire. So, he says his fantasy was all aglow. So, he was bright with imagination. On, let's move on to the next stanza, children. I read a book of Jules Verne and went off to the moon. It was just to take a look, then it was time to return. Now, what is this book of Jules Verne? You would want to like to know? Yes, let me tell you. Jules Verne, 1828 to 1905, was a French author best known for his tales of adventure, including 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. See, this is one book that he wrote. Next one, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Next, Around the World in 80 Days. So, what happened when he read this book? When he read the book written by Jules Verne, he went off to the moon to take a look at it and after virtually enjoying his visit, he comes back to reality. See how books transport us from our reality to imaginary world, isn't it? Now, let us move on to the next stanza. I spent time in the forest of Africa with Dr. Livingstone as my guide. Then off again to America with Huckleberry Finn I did hide. Now, let us see who is Dr. Livingstone here? Yes, David Livingstone was a Scottish physician and a pioneer Christian missionary and an explorer in Africa who lived in 1800s. In 1855, Livingstone discovered a spectacular waterfall which he named Victoria Falls. He was the first European to cross the width of southern Africa and 
he sought to bring civilization to Africa and undertook three extensive expedition throughout much of the continent. Now, what does the poet want to do with Dr. Livingstone? Yes, the book by Dr. Livingstone takes him to the forest of Africa. He learns the ways of the jungle life under the guidance of the author. So, after reading this book, he wants to take Dr. Livingstone as his guide to learn more about the forest of Africa. Next, who is Huckleberry Finn? So, we come across this word Huckleberry Finn in the stanza. So, who is he? Yes, Huckleberry Finn is one of the enduring characters in American fiction, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Mark Twain has written this book called Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Huckleberry Finn is a character in that novel. So, can you see the picture of that book? Now, what is the effect of reading the novel on the poet? Yes, he reads the adventures of Huckleberry Finn and pays a visit to America in his imagination. Yes, now let us move on to the next answer children. In my world of fantasy and imagination, I perform such wonderful deeds. A hero of all the nation, I was the one that succeed. Now, what are the feelings expressed by the poet in these lines? So, he prefers to do the wonderful deeds done by the heroes of the novels that he had read and become a hero himself. Of course, all in the world of fantasy and imagination. Now, let us move to the next stanza. Then I grew up, my childish world at an end. I had become serious, it nearly drove me around the bend. I still do like the mysterious, having unknown quality. This is the message I am trying to send. We have come to the last stanza. So, what is the tone of the poet here? Earlier, he, fe he was feeling so happy that his imagination had taken him to different places. But to the end of the stanza, we know that he is coming to the reality. Now that he is grown up, he is so engrossed with his daily activities. right? So, what happened when the poet grew up? What are the feelings towards life? So, when the poet grew up, his childish world of fantasy came to an end. Isn't it sad children? Yes, he became a serious man and this drove him towards frustration. He could not escape from the hardships of the real life. What is the message given by the poet in the poem? So, he says, imagination combined with reading can help you enjoy and live in the world of mysteries whatever the age. So, you might say as you are growing that reading is boring. No, not at all. When you read books, you go to the world of imagination. So, you can just go anywhere you want children and you can become anyone and you can be with anybody you like. So, this is the message that he gives that when you continue reading, you will always keep your imagination alive and that will keep you happy throughout your life. Yes, children. Now, children, let us see how much you have understood. So, here is a small activity for you. You have to match. So, what is that you have to match? So, you have to match the following names in column A with their phrases associated in column B. So, let us see. So, can you see all these are the names that is given that appears in your poem. So, see the column A, Pirates, second one is America, third one is Eskimos, fourth one is Joel's 1A and fifth one is Africa. Now, let us move to column B. So, column B has the words associated with these names. So, all in jumbled way. For, for example, first one is Moon, next one is Dr. Livingstone, third one is Seven Seas, then Huckleberry Finn, lastly we have Snow. So, now think children, can you match them? Let me give you some time. Yes? Now, shall we see the answer children? The first one, Pirates, 
seven seas. America. Yes, the correct word is Huckleberry Finn. Third one, Eskimos. So, as soon as you say Eskimo, what comes to your mind? Yes, no. Then, fourth one, Jules Warne. So, as soon as you say Jules Warne, it is the moon. Next, Africa. Yes, here he wants to meet Dr. Livingstone. So, have you all matched this correctly? All those you have got correctly, congratulations children, you have done a good job. Now, let us move on another activity children. Now, here you have to rearrange the imagination of the poem as it appears in the poem. So, living with Eskimos, become a hero, visit to the moon, visit America, act like a cowboy, sail the seven seas, spend time in the African forest, play the game with pirates. So, all the imaginations of the poet are in jumbled way. No? So, you have to arrange them in the order that, that it has appeared in the poem. Yes, take your time. You can refer your textbooks as well to see which one comes first. I can see you are all actively participating and writing it down. Now, children, let us check the answer. Yeah, first, the poet imagines to play the game with pirates. And secondly, and he wants to sail the seven seas as a pirate. Next, he acts like a cowboy. Next, we see that he would like to live with the Eskimos in the land of ice and snow. Next, he wants to visit the moon. Next, he imagines to spend time in the African forest with Dr. Livingstone. And lastly, he wants to visit America. With all these things, he also wants to become a hero, right? So, have you all arranged all these correctly? Yes, very good children. Now, let us check your comprehension. Now, here is a small quiz. So, you will have some multiple choice question. See, four alternates are given for each of the following questions or incomplete statements. So, choose the most appropriate alternative. Your first question, the joy of reading helped the poet. Is it A, escape the daily grind, B, get a vivid imagination, C, do simple things that pleased him or D, live in the world of fantasy. So, which is your answer children? Children, for this, let us take the help of the fairy and we will ask, what is the answer? Fairy, my dear, please show us the answer. Yes. The answer is escape the daily grind. So, the joy of reading helped the poet to escape the daily grind. Second question children, what did the poet do in the land of ice and snow? Your options are, he spent his time reading, he did simple things that pleased him, C, he did mysterious things or D, he went hunting and fishing. Yes, think of your answer. Now, did you choose your answer? Now, fairy my dear, please show us the answer. Yes, it is option D, event hunting and fishing. Now, let us move on to the third question children. The poet went to the moon too. Is it option A, become a hero? Option B, read a book by Jules Verne? Or C, just to take a look? Or option D, escape the daily grind. I know you are just waiting to answer this, right? Now, let us call our fairy. Fairy, my dear, please come. So, the answer is C, just to take a look. Now, let us move to the question 4. Who was the poet's guide in the forest of Africa? Yes, the options are, is it A, Huckleberry Finn or B, Dr. Livingstone or C, Jules Verne or D, George Bernard Shaw. So, shall we ask our fairy to come and show the answer? Because you have already chosen your answer, isn't it? Yes, the answer is 
Option B, Dr. Livingstone. Now, let's move to question 5. When the poet grew up, so these are the things that he did. His childish world of fantasy came to an end. He preferred doing wonderful deeds. He became a hero of all nations. Or option D, he discovered the joys of reading. Yes? What is the answer, children? The answer is, come on, fairy, show us the answer. Yes, his childish world of fantasy came to an end. So, once the poet grew up, his childish world of fantasy came to an end. Now, let's move to question 6. The simple things that please the poet were, yeah, is it playing at parrots? B, sailing the seven seas or C, becoming a cowboy or all of the above. Did you uh, choose your answer children? Yes. Fairy, can you show us the answer please? All of the above. Yes. So, the simple things that please the poet were, he loved to play as a pirate and he wanted to sail the seven seas and he also loved to become a cowboy. Now, let's move to the Highlights of the poem, children. Now, in this poem, the poet tells us how he lived in the world of fantasy and imagination. As a boy, the poet used to play the game of pirates and act as if he were sailing in a ship on seven seas. So, then he would think he was a cowboy taking care of cattle on a ranch riding on a horse. He took a liking to reading books and discovered a lot of joy in reading. While reading, he would become so engrossed in it that he would forget the hard and dull work of the day. The book transports him to the world of imagination. In his world of imagination, the poet sailed the seven seas went hunting and fishing with the Eskimos, went off to the moon, spent time in the forest of Africa and paid a visit to America. He prefers to do the wonderful deeds done by the heroes of the novels and become a hero himself. As a poet grows up, his childish fantasies come to an end. He becomes serious about the harsh realities of life. He could no longer lose himself in the imaginary world. The poet says that he still likes the mysterious nature of the books. He ends it with the message. He wants us to understand that books are the windows to the world. Yes, children, we have come to the end of a beautiful poem. And now let's move on to the assignment, children. The first Assignment is, you have to read the poem thrice and memorize the poem children. Second, at least read one book of your choice in a month. Please do the second one. Okay, don't miss it. The third one is, write the summary of the poem in your own words. So children, we have come to an end of a beautiful class on imagination. I am sure you enjoyed the class. I enjoyed teaching you thoroughly children. Thank you so much. Have a great time and remember always imagine big and live your life happily. Stay blessed. God bless you. Bye children.